I think we're, as, as kind of speakers, as vocalists, we don't really think often our voice as a sound that I am sounding right now. Um, so I like to kind of unf unfold that uh, to emphasize already sound as a relational event, a relational material. So the voice is a good way to open that up, to kind of point at it and emphasize it. <clears throat> because fundamentally it's quite clear how the voice can be relational. Um, but from there I really like to move into other areas, also thinking about experiences of listening, listening to sounds around us, things happening in the space, that in a way already kind of bring those things close to me. So how what I hear in a space, what I hear outside the door, on a very like subconscious level is already informing my understanding of where I am. So sound is also very much about orientation, uh, about how we find ourselves in places. So listening and sound uh, happen very, almost like again, kind of subconsciously, a sort of below the level of, of focused attention. So, but it's very essential and very primary. So from there we can sort of start to reflect upon how we also can maybe use sound to develop orientations, to enhance relationships to others, to also extend our sense of belonging uh, into areas where we're not so familiar, uh, and maybe also in relationship to other kinds of species uh, and other kinds of events around us. For instance, we couldn't think of the Swamp School as a tool in a way. I mean, I definitely, um, there is a, a moment, of course, where you have to open up these topics, not so much to educate, but to create situations where, you know, um, these ideas can become enacted or experimented with or practiced, lead to certain kinds of practices. So. Situations like the Swamp School, I think, kind of really provide that in a really nice way because they're very experimental, pedagogical contexts where we can play around you know, and um, performatively, um, together, playfully. Um, so I think that the pedagogical framework is a very uh, effective tool uh, in which to kind of like... Um, you know, research and elaborate some of these topics and kind of figure them in terms of practice. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, other ways, I mean, certainly as an artist, I feel like I'm developing works that um, also create types of narrative structures or types of scenarios in which I'm addressing people as listeners. Uh, and so, Sound and listening might not be the primary topic, but it's like a subtext uh, uh, that I'm very much um, aware of and, and utilizing and including in uh, artistic uh, activities and projects. Uh, lately, I was doing some work with a group of dancers uh, in Spain, and uh, I was uh, asking them to basically develop kinds of choreographies, movements in the city, in response to what they were hearing. Um, so it's very much about how sound is also affecting the body, moving us, how sound moves us. And of course, dance is a very immediate way in which we can see that and feel it. And um, it was really beautiful and I was filming them. So in the end, I made a series of video pieces that were then presented in an exhibition. And I really felt like what was happening was that I was like producing an image of listening, yeah, and that in a way what you kind of witnessed was a body in transformation according to this almost proposition of sound and its relationality. Um, so that was also another way to sort of try to um, give narrative almost to the possibilities of, of listening and what it can, can maybe um, shape us or how it can uh, uh, affect uh, relationships.